Metal roofs with rooftop insulation. This is a bomber assembly. I've done it many times over the years, but in the build show today, we're gonna review two of my houses that I've recently built and show you all the details to get a gorgeous metal roof like this, but also to have rooftop insulation. Today's video is sponsored by Sheffield Metals. Let's get going. All right, guys, so we're talking rooftop insulation and metal roofs. First off, let me review the assembly on these two houses. because I think that's probably why you're here. So I framed both these houses in a non-traditional way. I use what's called perfect wall or monopoly framing, as I've called it. That means that when we frame the roof, we've actually clipped the rafter tails so that they don't protrude through the wall sheathing. The wall sheathing goes up and actually touches the roof sheathing. Now I've used zip system sheathing on both houses where the zip system wall sheathing can actually be taped to the roof sheathing. This is a nice system because now I know that my exterior envelope is very airtight and watertight. Then after that, I'm putting my poly ISO on the roof, but you're gonna notice that that poly ISO is put down after I've put some, basically some fake rafter tails on, some rafter tails that are gonna allow me to get a good looking overhang like you see here but it's not into the framing on the house, it's on top of the framing. Now we use some LVLs, basically some two by six LVLs. And depending on your wind loads and your uplift, you're gonna have to verify with your engineer how to do this. But in my area, I don't have super high winds. We were able to cut those LVLs into an L shape, screw them down with some Spax power lags into the rafters below. And you're gonna notice on the outside, they're thicker. They're, they're actually the full four inch depth but where they hit the roof deck, we've thinned them down to two inches. That's so that I can put that second layer of poly ISO on top. Now, once those were down and we formed the overhangs on the outside of the house, uh, you'll see from the drone shots, it kind of looks like a toothed uh, exterior to the house. And again, that's only to form that overhang. Once that was done, then we're ready to put down that poly ISO. Now, in this case, we used Atlas poly ISO and we used the fiberglass faced product. That's around an R 5.5 per inch or 5.25 per inch. So when I did four inches of total depth, we got to around R 21 for the rooftop insulation. The first layer goes down with some cap fasteners and that's gonna be flush with those rafter tails that I built. And then the second layer is covering over top of those rafter tails. So when you look at that afterwards, it looks like we've got a full blanket of insulation. Now I could have done it in four inch but the reason why you don't want to do that is all uh, poly iso foam is going to have a little bit of shrinkage in the panels and if you were to do that you'd have some shrinkage which means that you'd have a loss of insulation at the seams so we run it in two layers we put a two inch layer down and then we stagger the seams both horizontally and vertically that allows us to make sure we've got really good full depth insulation now both the houses started the same way with a two inch layer but here's where they differ. This house, I used a hunter panel for the second layer. Now, if you look at this cross section on the hunter panel, this is a panel that comes straight from hunter panels like this. It's a two inch insulation bonded to a one inch wood spacer bonded to a 5 8 CDX roof deck. Now they'll make this in whatever configuration you want, but this configuration allows me to vent my metal roof from actually the underside so if you look at the side of this house, you're gonna see that I've got a vented eave basically on, on all four sides of the house. And that vented eave is allowing air to come in underneath the roof deck so that I could install my metal roof conventionally. And when you look at this roof, it's, it's almost perfect. Um, there's no waves, there's no undulation. It looks really, really good. It's right on top of that uh, 5.8 CDX. Now I do have a shark skin uh, Ultra SA underlayment on there. That's one of my favorite underlayments and Sheffield recommends that for their roofs as well. But on my house, let's go back to my project. I basically made a SIPS panel out of my roof where I did my two layers uh, of poly ISO. And then on top of that, I put a second layer of zip system sheathing down so that I'd have a solid sheath deck. Now I don't have insula, or pardon me, I don't have airflow underneath that so then I wanted to put airflow on top of that so that I have vented metal. Hey, speaking of those skylights, look how awesome they look inside this house. I splayed this opening inside this master bath 
and man, that light looks amazing. But there's two cool features you can't quite tell on this skylight. It looks like a normal skylight from here, but there's two things that make that Marvin Awaken really awesome. I think the Awaken name comes from the lights that are in there. It has a ring of LEDs in there that can change their color temperature. And so now in the nighttime, I could actually make it look like daylight was coming in, or I can soften that light uh, to more like you know a lower Kelvin, 2700 Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin, something like that to make it softer. So there's some really cool lighting features that I'd never seen before. And the other thing about this Marvin Awaken skylight that I really like is that it vents like no other one I've seen before. The, the skylight actually pops open and around the perimeter of that pop-up, there's an accordion style bug screen. Bugs are terrible for me here in Texas. We have some really bad mosquito times of the year where I would never think about opening my skylight, even if it was a beautiful day to vent the house because of that bug issue. So having that accordion style bug screen, that's a really big deal. I'm impressed with these Marvin Awakens. I'll show them to you again in the future once we get power on. Now let's pause there for a second and I actually have a metal roof expert, Adam with Sheffield Metals. Adam. Great to see you, Matt. Thanks for coming out to yeah, see absolutely. me, brother. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. All right, so I talked these guys, Adam, through the insulation assemblies, but let's talk about the metal and the differences between these two products and the reasons why I'd want to use metal yeah. on this roof assembly. Absolutely. So what you're going to have here is a long-term metal roof. So it, what you're getting with a shingle roof, you might only get a fraction of the life out of there. Mm -hmm. And if you're up there and, and tearing the roof off and putting more penetrations in, there's more opportunity to disrupt the airflow, disrupt the insulation that's well underneath that assembly. That's so right. what metal is going to do is it's going to be there long term and it's really going to be something that's not disturbed for 30, 40, 50 years. Ooh, I like that multi-decade service. Yep. And we're also going to be able to take high wind and hail and all those other issues without having to pull that roof off. Too yeah. Hard. And one of the exciting things about this roof is that we went with our most bulletproof panel as far as wind uplift goes, 24 gauge. Uh, snap lock 550 panel, okay. which really has tremendous uplifts. Not the biggest concern in Austin, Texas, but it really is a, a bulletproof roofing system in terms of uplifts and things like that. My guys actually ran that on the street with your coil. So your coil came and then we have a new tech machine. My roofer actually runs those panels on site stacks them and then this roof only took us three days to install it was a pretty straightforward roof and and that's really one of the big advantages of working with us is you know it's really about moving that manufacturing site you know and, and a roof really is manufacturing it's yep. just it changes every time so you take the machine it's more convenient more closer you run what you need you run the sections that you need when you need them and you're able to really be a lot more efficient, a lot less waste with our type of metal roofing system. I love it. Yeah. Now, Adam, we've got uh, in both these houses and really all my houses, what we call a conditioned attic space, meaning there's no airflow into that attic. So let's talk airflow for the metal roofs though and how that could benefit the assembly and what the difference is between the two. For this one, we did hunter panels where we've got a 5 8 uh, plywood deck and the airflow is actually underneath the plywood. Yeah. On my house, the airflow was underneath the metal, basically in between the roof deck and the metal. Talk to me about what that does for a house, both in the south and the north, and whether that's necessary in all parts of the country. Sure, you, you know, if you're trying to increase our value, you can really do whatever you need. So this assembly is probably more something you'd see in the north. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's totally sealed. It's got an assembly where you don't have that thermal break like yep. you do on your house. So yep. in the south, really the advantage to the assembly you have is you have your metal roof panel and then you have a conditioned space mm -hmm. that, all, that acts as a thermal break. Yep. Air is going to be continually cycling through that, but it's really not able to transfer that heat, the, the big heat into the roof assembly, into the house, uh, where this one where you'll you'll probably have more heat transferring into it but you have so much r value here that it's it's really going to be minimal uh, the nice advantage to this type of assembly where it's really the the roof panel on the roof deck is if there's an issue down the line it's going to be a lot easier to remedy because the shark skin and everything else it's going to behave more like a traditional roof assembly right. you know uh, plywood deck roof assembly makes sense now uh Two different panel styles as well, Adam. I'd like for you to comment for these guys about the difference between the flat panel that I did at my house 
And what's this panel called again? This is a striated snap lock. Striated. striated. I can never pronounce that correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those words it's, that get you. It's got like a I don't know what. How do you how do you describe the striations? So the striations are really going to provide linear breaks in the panel. So they're going to be straight on the panel. However, they're going to help things like oil canning or if there's shape issues in the roof deck mm -hmm. that, that are really driving, you know, some waviness in the deck Meaning and they're really like going to minimize your rafters it. weren't perfectly yes, flush, that yes. kind so of thing is going to hide that. Yeah, and this roof deck looks beautiful, but yeah, you know, if, if you looked at, uh, you know, my roof, the, sna uh, the snap lock system we did on my roof, we wouldn't have been able to use a flat panel. I guess we could have, but it just would have looked terrible. So, so we use striations on my roof and it looks beautiful. So the idea is those striations kind of hide those light, those slight the imperfections, imperfections. Yeah. not perfectly. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at my flat panel, if there were imperfections, you'd see them on those flat panels. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's really difficult with a re-roof because you've got age and time and, and things happen to, you know, happen to warp and move over time, where when you have new construction, you know, you should have a, a roof deck that's like glass and, yeah. you know, like your house, you're afforded the ability to be able to use a flat panel and, and have it look really good with minimal oil canning. Totally. Last question for you, Adam. You know, we're talking about a bomber roof assembly. People, people who are doing this assembly want a roof that they're not going to touch for several decades. Talk to me about the difference between 24 and 26 or other gauge options. Sure. So, Really, I think the big thing is 24 and 26 gauge, they're going to last a long time. I mean, they're, one's not just going to crumble because the 26 gauge is thinner. What you see is 24 gauge are typically going to be the engineered assemblies. Mm -hmm. So they're going to hold up a little bit better to, to high weather, to hail, things like that. Uh, additionally, and this isn't always the case, but I'd say about 90% of the 26 gauge in the industry is an SMP, silicon modified polyester paint system, okay. that just does not have the same fade characteristics, chalk care characteristics of a PVDF or a Kynar type. And that's um, what we've system. got here. And you have Kynar, and that's that's, and that's the all stuff you that's guys do last. at Sheffield, right? Predominantly, we do yeah. a little bit of SMP, but it's it's really more focused on the flashing markets. Got it. Adam, for people who are not familiar with Sheffield, how can they find out more about you guys and tell these guys about your YouTube channel as well? So you can find us at SheffieldMetals.com. We've got tons of info and videos on our website. And additionally, we have the Metal Roofing channel on YouTube that is hosted by Thad Barnett. These guys have some great info. And if you're a roofer or a builder watching this, request Sheffield Metals. That's that coil that got uh, sent out to my job site that that new tech machine built the roof basically right here on site. And like I said, we've worked with these guys for years. Quick, easy, great company to work with. Thanks for coming out, brother. I appreciate, appreciate it, Matt. Thank you. Guys, hopefully you learned something about insulated metal roofs. I'll have links to Hunter and several of the other products that we talked about in the description below. Big thanks to Sheffield for sponsoring today's video. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.